Um, so, um, morning, my name is Alvaro Sanchez, um, and I'm going to be talking about Micronaut, uh, actually the whole day, so this is an introductory talk. Then we have the lunch break. After the lunch break, I'll be running a, a workshop, three-hour workshop about Micronaut as well, um, for beginners as well. Uh, and after that, we'll, we'll have a coffee break, and after the coffee break, I will de deliver a uh, um, natively, cloud native for Micronaut talk as well. Um, you'll have plenty of me today. Sorry about that. So, um, I'm coming from Madrid, Spain. Uh, I'm a developer uh, in the Java ecosystem, Java Spring mainly. Uh, I've been using Groove and Rails for quite a while. Uh, and at the moment, I, wor I, work, I work at OCI, Object Computing, you know, the company behind Groovy, Rails, and Micronaut. Um, I like to speak at different conferences, um, lately essentially about Micronaut, but also about Groovy authentication, uh, things like that. So, um, how many of you have used um, either Rails or Spring Boot? Raise your hands. And uh, how many of you have used Micronaut already? Uh, in production? Ah, uh, too early. We'll get there eventually. Uh, yeah, so I'll give you a little bit about um, the reasons why we got here uh, with the framework. So the first thing you need to understand is that Micronaut has been created by the team who created Grails. Uh, so we got a 10 years experience creating a framework for developers. So we really know, uh, we really care about developer productivity. Uh, and when you evolve, and actually if you think about Grails, it is based on Spring Boot, so we, uh, you know, we, we, we don't start from a, from a clean, uh, fresh background, but on the other hand we inherit all the Spring stuff, which is uh, um, uh, it, it is great because it, it gives us a lot of things, but it also um, may have uh, some problems as we will see later. So, so essentially, um, any framework based on, on annotations, like for instance Spring or Jakarta IE or Grails, will tend to become fat. Uh, however, we really like the productivity model. We really like the way that Spring or Grails do dependency injection, um, you know, the services, the MVC pattern, we really like that. So, so we live with it. But uh, can we do something else today? So, uh, Spring and Grails, and essentially Spring, which is uh, what Grails uses underneath, uh, it is amazing, it is technically amazing. It literally changed my life as a developer uh, 15 years ago, and probably for you as well. So, so before Spring, uh, our lives were much, much more complicated. Um, the thing is that it does many things at runtime. So it not only has to, uh, needs to, uh, to read your source code of your application, but also at runtime needs to read uh, all the bytecode for every single bin, every single uh, class, attribute, method, etc. To read the annotation, uh, it'll use the reflection API to synthesize the, the annotation and will create uh, reflective metadata to do, for instance, the auto wiring, things like that. Uh, and doing reflection is expensive, so therefore we will have to create a cache for the reflective metadata. Um, which is expensive, right? So it'll take uh, time to do all the, the uh, traversing of the bytecode and also memory to, to do the caching. Uh, the reality shows that the, the startup time and memory consumption is a function of the source code you have. So the more files, the more bins you have, the larger the application uh, will be, you know, the, the longer it will take to run and uh, the more memory it will consume. So, uh, we as a team uh, thought about this for a long time. And if you think of the particular case of Rails, so, you know, um, in, in the case of Spring Boot or Spring uh, in general, um, because we use Groovy, um, the Rails applications were more effective with this uh, memory consumption problems. So uh, we were thinking uh, a lot about this, and this is the reason why we created Micronaut. So 
Uh, Micronaut is a relatively new framework. We actually um, uh, open sourced it uh, um, literally one year ago here at GreatConf uh, 2018. Um, and uh, the idea of, of Micronaut is to, I uh, want you to, to get with two main, main ideas. One is the productivity, which is really important for us. So we want to give you the same the same or even better productivity than with the Spring Boot or Grails, but with the performance of a compiled and uh, non-blocking framework. That's the main difference. So Micronet has been designed from scratch. So uh, literally from scratch with no dependencies. Actually, there is a design goal to introduce as few dependencies as we can. Um, we rarely rely on third-party libraries for, for anything, like, uh, for instance, to, to work with Consul. Uh, we didn't bring a, you know, a Java client for Consul. We create our own, actually using uh, Micronaut stuff. So um, we want to be like really lightweight. Uh, the Java files will be really, really small. Um, and it, and it's, it's designed f uh, with the cloud um, in mind, what we call uh, natively cloud native. Because you can call framework today cloud native. But uh, in a framework which is 15 years old uh, is not cloud native. I mean, it's been evolved to be uh, cloud uh, friendly, but definitely not native. Um, it is really lightweight and reactive because it's based on Netty. Uh, so it is, it is a similar approach than the one taken by Vertex, Ratpack, uh, even Spring, um, Spring Web Flux. Uh, and there are others like uh, Quarkus, for instance. So we're all based on Netty, and Netty, uh, for the ones who, who know, is a uh, non-blocking um, network server for Java. Uh, we have a, um, you know, framework for all kinds of applications. Uh, we focus on microservices, but you can really create like CLI applications or or anything like that, like message-driven application who doesn't have a server. Uh, there are different use cases you can use with Micronaut, and we offer um, by default all the main uh, features you will expect from a general purpose framework, like for instance AOP, uh, dependency injection, uh, testing support, uh, many cloud uh, features, uh, we will see later, and so on and so forth. Uh, we support uh, Maven and Gradle for the build, uh, Java, Groovy, and Kotlin for the languages of your application, and, and everything is done at compile time. It is what is called ahead of time compilation. So the idea is that we use annotation processors uh, in the case of Java and Kotlin and AST transformations for, uh, for Groovy to ahead of time pre-compute all the framework infrastructure, like for instance, uh, to do dependency injection as opposed to Spring or Grails, we don't do that at runtime. We do that at compile time. And uh, there are many, many, many things that we do at, co at compile time. Uh, like, for instance, all dependency injection, deconfiguration, uh, metadata is, is uh, pre-computed at compile time. Uh, not the values, but the framework infrastructure. infrastructure. Uh, all the notation metadata, uh, AOP, right? So, so Everything which is framework related is done at compile time. That's the reason why it's much faster to, to run. Um, so yeah, you can, you can build like microservices, serverless applications. Uh, we have a really nice integration with Graal VM, which I will show later, which is really uh, nicely, mm, is gonna play uh, really nice with, with uh, serverless applications. Um, uh, we have a really nice support for message-driven applications with Kafka and Routing Queue. Uh, you can create CLI applications with no server, no UI, no, no REST API at all, just a CLI application, a command line application. Uh, you can use it in Android uh, because uh, this is really lightweight, it's, com it's compiled and friendly, so you can use, for instance, the HTTP client in an Android application or the dependency injection. Uh, the configuration system, um, uh, that's possible today. Uh, and essentially anything that can start with the main method. Uh, and uh, uh, regarding GraalVM, you may have heard about it. It's the new, like the, the, you know, the, next, the next big thing. 
Um, it is in well, it is uh, production ready, uh, ready um, but uh, still like the you know the, the native image, which is the part uh, that everybody is talking about GraalVM. Uh, it is not uh, production ready yet, or not for all the use cases, right? Uh, the idea of GraalVM native image is that we'll create a machine code for your Java application, and we'll make it run it like uh, immediately. So we're we're talking about, for instance, a, a regular Micronet application will, you know, new blank application will start in around a second, 900 milliseconds. Uh, uh, 1200 milliseconds, something like that. Uh, with GraalVM, you can uh, have like 20 milliseconds. So it's instant. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, or like, for instance, in the example you have there, uh, it is 14 milliseconds, which is great. Uh, this will pl play really nice with uh, serverless applications, serverless functions, when you uh, need to, you, you need your functions to, to start up really quickly. Uh, and you can do to that today, for instance, if you use the AWS uh, custom runtime, uh, you can build a custom Docker image with a, you know, with a Micronet application using GraalVM, and uh, it'll, it'll uh, start your functions really quickly. So let's do some coding. If the demo gods are, are with me, which I hope. So how many of you have never seen a Micronaut project? Have never seen? OK. Half of you. So a Micronaut project is a regular Maven or Gradle build, so that there's, there's nothing uh, new for you. There are the typical SSC main or SSC test directories. Uh, the entry point is this application class. Uh, you'll see many things uh, that will ring a bell because they're you know they're like they're the same in Spring or Grails, right? So uh, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. Uh, we didn't want to create new concepts, new terms, new you know. We didn't want you to to have um, a tough experience learning the framework because uh, we, we understand, we realize that most of the people in the industry already know Spring Boot or Grails, but, but essentially Spring Boot. So we want to make the experience for, for Spring Boot developers um, as easy as possible. Uh, and for instance, the application method is one of the, one of the things you will see familiar, but there are many others, like for instance, the configuration system um, uh, and many more that we will see later, right? So one of that is the, the controller uh, mechanism. So I'm going to create, well, actually, I'm going to create a new uh, Pojo that will say greeting. And then I'm using Java because it's the default, but um, yeah, you can use a group of Kotlin as you prefer. And then I'm going to generate um, default constructor. Then the Java ceremony. Uh, this is the Pojo that we will return from our controller. And we use Jackson underneath to, to produce a JSON representation uh, for this object. So the next thing I'm going to create is a controller. Rating controller. The annotation model is really similar to Spring Boot or Grails. So they have like at rest controller, we have at controller with path. Actually, I'm gonna, re gonna be returning a greeting. Say hello. Actually, hello, string name. Uh, the other thing I'm going to make is to create a service just for the sake of uh, showing you the dependency injection uh, mechanism. So this is a, 
and greeting service with V and then greeting say hello And then here, I want an attribute of the service. And then I want a constructor using the field. So uh, in Micro, the dependency injection, for instance, we have a constructor injection uh, implicitly. Uh, when you have a non-default constructor, we will use that to build your object because it's the only way to, to build this, this object, right? So uh, there's no need. Essentially, this can be omitted, the add inject annotation. For DI, we use the JavaX uh, inject package annotation, annotations. So that's uh, at singleton, add inject, etc. Uh, for the particular case of, of constructor injection, which is you know the, the recommended approach, uh, you uh, don't necessarily have to to specify that because a non-default constructor is um, you know the only way to build it. So we will at compile time realize that your a controller needs a service instance. So we will build, build the service, which, by the way, I forgot to annotate with a singleton, right? Uh, this will create a single instance of this service in the application context. And then this is simply re return Grading service, say hello, name. And then this is a get. That should be it. Uh, once again, we have an, uh, annotations for all the um, all the common uh, HTTP methods like get, post, post put, delete, etc. Uh, in Spring Boot, this is this would be like add get mapping, so it's really similar, right? Um, there are a few differences. Like for instance, we don't require you to to specify here a path variable, right? In Spring Boot, you have to, and that's because uh, at runtime they they won't be able to to read the, the parameter names. But the, at compilation time, um, provided that we you have um, you know special flag in the compiler, uh, we will be able to read this uh, argument name, and we will check it against the path variable defined here. And if there is a typo, uh, we will throw a completion error for you, right? So uh, that's great. Um, what else? What if we run this? Let's try. By the way, I created the application with, of course, you know what? I'll use the shell. Um, I created the application with console support because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be demonstrating that. Uh, this is the configuration file for this uh, application. Uh, Micronaut application name, it is the service ID for this application to register in console. Uh, and this is the uh, default console configuration, which is pointing to an instance I'm running locally. Uh, so yeah, this is already running. So we can curl 8080, hello. Uh, great conf. And we have a response, right? Really simple. Uh, we should see the instance uh, registered in console around here. Where are you? There we go. Uh, so it's working. So um, why don't we create a test? Because running 
like uh, this request here manually is, fu is funny, but um, it is better if we create a test. So let's do that. I'm going to be creating a uh, greeting controller test. This is going to be a JUnit 5 test, um, which is the default for Java. So depending on the language you use, so for instance, if you uh, create your project with, uh, with Groovy support, you will have a Spock. And if you, if you choose Kotlin, you will have Spec. Uh, in either case, there is a an, uh, an test annotation called microtest. Uh, what this annotation will do is will turn this particular class into a, a VIN. So uh, it'll start an instance of your application on a random port, uh, and will turn this very class into a VIN itself. So you can do depend dependency injection. You can grab a VIN from the application context and test things if you want. Um, what I'm doing, actually, is creating a HTTP client. So this is... Um, uh, creating client. This is actually an interface. I'm using the add client annotation. Uh, the add client annotation is um, to produce a declarative HTTP client. The idea is that you will use the same, anno the same annotations that are controller to, um, and Micron will turn that into an HTTP client. So this need, needs to match the controller path, which is hello, and then That's all I need for a declarative HTTP client for my application. So in my test, this is a eight test. As it equals, hello. Um, Conf, and then um, I want to inject the client. So greeting client client at inject client um, hello. Great. Let's try. It is failing. Why? Ah, happens all the time in every conference. Get message because this is returning the hello method is not returning the string but the actual pojo. Now what? Hmm. So my test is failing because my service is really dumb, right? I forgot to add the hello. But that's good, we have tests for this. So you see how fast is the test cycle? It's really fast, it's insanely fast. It is 229 milliseconds, right? And this, it is a f this is not a unit test. It's a, it's, a, it's a bloody fun, uh, functional test. We, we're running the application, the entire application. Um, uh, we're and actually, this is an HTTP request. Uh, you maybe don't trust me, but uh, I'll show you. So 
uh, I'll change the, the logback uh, configuration to uh, put the, the, you know, the SDP client in trace mode. Actually, within the test, the application is also registering in console, so it could be much faster if we would disable that. Um, so if we run this again, then if I'm able to, this is all the console registration thing. This is the request we made to random pod, and this is the response. This is a full HTTP request to, to full listens of your application. This is awesome, isn't it? <laughs> but there's more. So I'll create a, a Graal VM image. Um, in the background while I do other things because this will take a couple of minutes. Actually, you know what? I don't want this logger thing anymore. Because it'll be noisy. In the meantime, um, I'm going to switch over. Ah, this failed. Ah, no, it didn't fail. I'm going to switch over to uh, another mic microservice. So, this is another microservice, and uh, we will use console for service discovery. So, we will run the first one, uh, and we'll have it to register in console, and we will use this one to. Um, to you know, to make a request to the to the first one, and we will introduce a little bit of reactive programming, if um, we have time. So, uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the Pojo and this client. I'm sure you will forgive me for copy and paste. I can't copy from different sources. Anyway. And in this case, instead of using the path, I'm using a service ID. And the service ID will match the Micronaut application name of the first application, which is Hello Galaxy. So uh, Micronaut will will query console for for you know for the service ID and console will give the actual host and port uh, where this application is running. Uh, the rest remains. The only thing I'm I'm changing. Uh, actually, I want to get rid of uh, this greeting message. Um, well, maybe not. Let's leave it for a while. Uh, but it's, you know, instead of a, a returning a greeting, I'm going to be returning a single of a greeting. How many of you have used reactive programming? Three, four people. Yes, five. Six. Um, uh, I I won't enter into too much details because uh, this this is a subject for a, you know for a whole conference. Um, essentially, reactive programming um, brings you the possibility to run uh, pieces of code in the background, more or less, right? Um, in in the case of Micronaut, we support the reactive streams API. So that means you can use uh, Rx Java 1, Rx Java 2, or Reactor from Pivotal. Um, and uh, it, you know, any, of the framework, any of these frameworks will uh, have the notion of reactive types, which are wrappers for actual objects. For instance, in this case, a single, which is a Rx Java 2 reactive type, is a, um, is a reactive type that can emit, can produce, um, 
will produce a single result. Then we also have a maybe, which can produce 0 to 1, and a flowable, which can produce 0 to n results. Uh, if you have seen Spring Web Flux and Reactor, um, they have a mono and flux. Uh, so single is um, a comparable to the mono. Um, in reality, what will happen is that when you return a reactive type from your controller, and actually this is an HTTP client, so uh, this is a hint for Micronaut to perform the operation in a non-blocking way. Um, do you know the, the Netty uh, server works differently than Tomcat? Uh, there's no satellite API underneath, so there is no just a single thread pool. Uh, there are a few of them, normally two. Uh, there is one event loop, which is a relatively small thread pool where, where you know, all the, um, all the operations are dispatched. And then there is normally one or two, depending on the configuration, uh, compute thread pools, which are are relatively larger, uh, larger than the other one, uh, and well, where all the blocking operations are offload too. So when you're, you know, when 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 an operation is wrapped with a reactive type, a micronet will will run it in the event loop because it's non-blocking, so it's safe to run it. If on the other hand this would be a blocking operation, uh, it'll be offloaded to uh, to an IO thread pool to not block the the event loop. Uh, the good news is that you don't have to worry about anything like that. So uh, it is Micronaut who will subscribe to this uh, reactive type and uh, will do that on a different thread. And um, when the result is coming, it'll, it'll run the rest of your code uh, in that thread. Uh, and in the meantime, other threads have a chance to execute. Um, by the noise of my fans, uh, this should have finished, yes, so let's see if we can run it. 43 milliseconds is really great. This is the native image in Graal VM. I'll leave it running while we continue. So, um, so this is the client. I'm going to be creating a controller. Um, Gateway controller, for instance. This is a controller on the root path. And um, in this case, we're going to be returning um, a flowable of a greeting index, uh, this is a get request on the root path. Uh, I won't inject the client. Waiting client, client, in a structure, and then Uh, I'm returning a flowable because uh, I want to sh show you a little bit of um, reactive programming. So I'm going to make actually two requests. One with uh, great conf, and then I'm going to merge with another request with uh, Denmark. The last thing I need is uh, to change the server pod because the other one is listening on 8080, which is the default. So I'm going to be changing to 8081. Uh, and I do want here the, the login trace. Um, what else? We have the controller, client. I think this looks pretty good to me. Let's see if it's work. Mm -hmm. 
that's the console registration. Um, because it's in trace level, we'll see con uh, the, the console integration from Micronaut sending health her heartbeats to console uh, every, I don't know, every how much time, um, periodically. Um, so if I make a request to 0, 80, 81, and the demo gods are with me, of course. Let's try this individually. So this is a low. Ah, I think I know what's going on. Yes. That's going to be it, I guess. Whoa, my Graal VM isn't working. Well, I, I tested this last night. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I know, no, no, no. Well, for, for this particular use case, I did try last night, so I must have done something differently than I did um, at home. But uh, let's run it the traditional way. Okay, this works. So then, there we go. We have the two responses uh, composing an array. Um, and then if, if I looked, I want to show you for a moment. So you see those two lines, oh. those two lines, uh, this one here and this one here, they are different threads. So we're running them in parallel, sort of, right? Which is what I, what I wanted to show. Um, what else? Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you is um, I have time for another for another demo. Uh, so the other thing I wanted to show is. Um, how to deploy a Micronaut application to Google Cloud Run. So Google Cloud Run is um, a Docker-based, uh, serverless um, runtime, uh, which means that, for instance, if, you, if you've used AWS Lambda, you know you have to, to package your application in a special way, um, and then uh, it'll run without any server beh behind it. So uh, AWS will, will create an, uh, you know, the first request you will receive. It'll uh, instantiate your function in, a, um, in an instance underneath, but you don't have to worry about that. And uh, after, after that, it will keep it uh, warm. Uh, so the upcoming request will, will be much faster. Uh, Google Cloud Run is a similar idea. So it is serverless, so you don't configure any server at all. Uh, the difference is that you can not only run functions, but entire applications uh, without declaring any server, right? Uh, this is the command I'm running. So gr a Gradle jib. Uh, jib is, is a Gradle plugin uh, written by uh, the Google team to produce Docker images for Java projects. Um, so this, 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 will sac this will actually uh, create a jar file and then create a, <coughs> a Docker image with that jar file inside the container. We'll push it the container. <coughs> sorry, we'll push it the container to uh, to GCR, which is the container repository. And then with with the G Cloud CLI command, we're deploying that into uh, our um, uh, Google Cloud Run uh, project, and it'll give us a URL. 
and I'm actually hitting the you know a, uh, the a curl command uh, immediately, so uh, we don't lose time to. Um, so this is the application running, which is a hello world. So I want to change this. I have this application running here, and I'm going to be saying hello, great conf. And then I'm going to be redeploying this thing. Last time, do we have let, uh, five minutes left, potentially? Ten minutes. That's great. It is creating a new revision of the deployment. The request is running on the background, so the first time, as I said, um, there we go. The first time, it'll take a few seconds uh, to actually create the, the underlying uh, container instance. Uh, but after that, it's is immediate because uh, the, the, you know, the Google Cloud run uh, infrastructure is warmed up already. Uh, and this is um, this is a full micro application. Well, this is a hello world, but it, I mean, it's a, with a controller, so it is not a you know a reduced function with a reduced functionality. No, no, it's a full application, and uh, you can see how easy it is to deploy it. A um, few things before the questions. Uh, so, micro is open source. Uh, it has an Apache license. Uh, there is commercial support from OCI uh, and training. Uh, Jeff, which is in the room somewhere, uh, has been doing. A, it's at the, at the bottom of the of the room. He's been doing a lot of trainings uh, all around the world. Um, so if you wanna have a, like an uh, introductory training or anything like that, uh, you can contact OCI. Uh, we have a lot of uh, contributors, so uh, more than a hundred. Um, people contributing to the GitHub repo, uh, which only 20% kind of are coming from OCI. So we're getting a lot of contributions from the community, which is great. So the project is uh, um, getting um, a lot of uh, momentum. Uh, for instance, the Kafka support, not the Kafka, the routing queue support has been contributed by the community. The HashiCorp. Uh, Vault support has been contributed by the community. Uh, we have uh, people from Oracle here in the room who has done a little bit of Oracle Cloud uh, metadata support. Uh, so um, um, we have many people contributing uh, documentation changes or fixes or updates. Uh, so give it a try yourself. Uh, the website is micronaut.io. Uh, we have a uh, uh, huge documentation, so if you were to print the documentation, it would be more than 300 pages book. There are many, many, many pages uh, for the documentation. Uh, we have the notion of guides, which are like um, a step-by-step um, how-tos. We have more than 40 or 50, I don't remember, um, covering the most use cases, like, for instance, how to send emails, how to deploy an application to the cloud, how to create a message-driven application with Kafka, how to integrate uh, with console. So all the things you may imagine, or most of them are already uh, covered in, in guides. Uh, there is a workshop which I'm personally running um, after the lunch break. Uh, however, this workshop is prepared for um, uh, self service. So there is enough information in the workshop for you to, to follow at home. So if you, um, if you didn't like uh, you know, my presentation, uh, which I understand, um, so don't, don't attend my workshop or you can attend any other talk. 
uh, but do follow at home because uh, it is fun. It is uh, actually a couple of microservices using JPA, MongoDB Reactive. Um, it is a bit of fun, and it'll show showcase the different parts of the framework. Uh, we have a Gita um, community, which is a chat. Um, we are uh, around all, all the time uh, because we are uh, distributed across different time zones. Uh, so we're very friendly and open, and um, that's essentially all for me. So I hope you enjoyed this talk, and thank you very much. <laughs> yes, we have time for questions. Yep. Uh, yep. Can you talk about why you did that as opposed to annotating it? Uh, annotating the constructor or annotating the field? Annotating the, the field, yeah. So the, the, the question is why one would use constructor injection, uh, injection over field injection. And the reason is, um, well, you know, there is no 100% uh, um, answer for this, for this question. But uh, I think there is a consensus to say that uh, field injection is problematic because uh, you're essentially exposing a default constructor, um, which can uh, which can let someone to build your class with all the dependencies required uh, properly set up. However, if you choose a constructor injection, uh, there's no only there's no other way to build your object other than passing the requ the required dependencies. So that's normally the reason. But uh, other than that, you know, th there's practically, actually the generated code uh, at compile time is easier if you do a uh, constructor injection than if you do um, field, a field injection. Because um, we need to generate, I think we need to generate a, actually a constructor or a setter for the uh, property, things like that. But uh, uh, it, it is essentially to, uh, related to the dependencies of your class. There was another question over there. Same question. Ah, same questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> Actually, my um, view is is that if you use uh, annotation on on the field, you need to do uh, Java introspection, and then it cannot run be uh, compile at, at compile time. Then it's a runtime setting. So that's the reason. Uh, uh, but. You might be talking about the spring. Not, it's not the case in Micronaut. So I could have annotated the the attribute. But it, it, it will have to uh, resolve it when, when you start the program. No. We do that at compile time. Also for? Uh, for field injection, yes. Hmm? I'm using uh, field injection in the test, yeah. if you remember. Uh, this is field injection. But in a test, I don't care, you know. I'm going to create a constructor. You can use it. It still works, but it's, it, it uh, changed the runtime uh, to, to fill in. Mm, no. Can you show the generated? Yes. So this should be around. Um, what's the test? Is the greeting controller test? Should be somewhere around here, but th this is all the the generated code at compile time, and uh, believe me, the the field injection is, is here <laughs> uh, because it's on the so there's a test definition and then I think it should be this one. One minute. Gonna find it, uh, but it's compile time. Okay. In Grails, you can uh, manage your fields uh, by environment. So uh, in the development, yes. If, uh, I can have other fields, and uh, how does Micronaut manage that? It is, it is similar. So we have the notion of environment as well, and um, there are different ways to 
to, to specify, um, you know, per environment configuration, per environment <laughs> definition. Uh, we, ho we also have like, um, like for instance, in Spring Boot, you have conditional bin definitions. Uh, we have the same in Micronaut. Um, what else? So the, that's definitely supported. So the, the, other, the awesome thing about that in Micronaut is you can even have an environment application file for a cloud environment, right? So mm -hmm. you want a different config for GCP versus Oracle Cloud, yeah. you can do that. Yeah. So for instance, if you have application the jaml it is for, for all the environments, but you can have application dash test dot jaml or application dash GCP or application dash OCI or Oracle Oracle Cloud dot jaml. So uh, yeah, so it is the configuration system is environment aware, and um, you know you can have bin definitions uh, per environment as well. So that's re uh, really supported as well. What else? Thank you. Time is up. Lunch is up. So, thank Enjoy. You.